Hey there, my friend. Listen, are you having trouble structuring your podcast episode? Do you not know what to actually say? Well, in this training, I'm going to give you the formula that shows you exactly how to structure your podcast so that you can create impactful episodes. You see, many people have problems structuring their podcast episodes, and this is one of the things that keeps them from starting a podcast or even continuing a podcast. Most people feel like they are just rambling and they, 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 they their podcast episode has no direction. Like they start to feel lost. They feel confused. Uh, and those feelings actually turn into anxiety. But most people misdiagnose themselves when it comes to why they don't start. See, most people say that they're a procrastinator, right? Like, I'm procrastinating. <laughs> some people hide behind the technology and they say, you know, I'm just not tech savvy. And some people say they just don't like their voice. And all of those are just symptoms of anxiety. The real reason is that you don't think you're going to do well or you're going to be embarrassed if you mess up, or you might hate your voice, and you might think that everyone else will think you sound funny. And these things create anxiety that you misdiagnose as fear or procrastination. So, you know, we, always, we often hear people say, you know, I have the fear of starting. You know, I just got the fear of starting. And a lot of times we don't, we don't, we don't pull, peel back the layers and understand why we're feeling that. And the reason why you're feeling that is the thing that's causing you anxiety. That's the thing that's stopping you, okay? So, like I said, what you're experiencing is anxiety. And anxiety is just taking the present energy that you have now and you're putting it on an undesirable outcome in the future. But fear by definition, by the American Psychological Association, is an intense emotion aroused by the detection of an imminent threat. So, in order to have fear, okay, let me select my thing here. In order to have fear, okay, there actually has to be danger present. It needs to be present. It needs to actually be present. That danger actually has to be there. All right. It has to be coming towards you. <laughs> right. So in order to have fear, there needs to be a present threat. Like this is happening right now. <laughs> so you don't have fear. You have anxiety and anxiety travels from your heart down to your hands and make your hands cross and take no action. All right. But when you put your present energy into a favorable outcome of the future that you desire, okay, so here's you again, all right, here's my hands, all right, so then when we put our energy, all right, into a favorable outcome, so let's just say this is our energy again, here we go, this is our energy, this is our energy circle here, and we put that energy and we push it to a positive result. Okay, if we push it to the positive result that's going to be in the future, then guess what? That 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 thing, that favorable outcome creates anticipation in your heart. So this positive result is going to come back as come back to your heart. Okay, that's our heart there. That's a heart, and I'm sticking to that again. <laughs> All right, that's your heart. It's gonna call. It's gonna cause anticipation. All right. All right, and once you get that anticipation, that moves to your hands, and then your hands start to move, okay? And then you can turn that anxiety into anticipation just by changing your thoughts. So instead of thinking, see, what happens is, guys, is you put, you have a negative thought around the situation. So what you're, gonna, what you're doing is, in your head, you're thinking about a negative thought. This is going to happen in the future, right? And so if we want to get rid of this, all we need to do is change our thinking and make this a positive thought, all right? A positive thought. So once we start changing it to a positive thought, different things show up. So when you think of negative thoughts, what shows up is anxiety and then procrastination, okay? All right, and then, and, and, and then you know, if we think positive, Right, we think positive. What happens is we get anticipation. 
all right? And then anticipation turns into movement. And then that then movement turns into manifest manifestation, right? Okay? Because you get anxiety, right? Anxiety turns into uh, procrastination and then ant- and, and a, a negative a positive thought turns into anticipation and then anticipation turns into a movement and then that movement turns into manifestation okay so we manifest those things that we want if we change our mindset and it's not some magical mumbo jumbo what happens is that thought turns that thought t- creates anticipation because we want to do the thing now now because we want to do things we start moving and then because we start moving we actually create the thing that we're trying to create Right, which is the podcast in this episode, <laughs> or in this case, <laughs> in this episode. All right, so, so you can turn anxiety into anticipation just by changing your thoughts. So how did you? How do you do that, though? How do you change this negative thought into a positive thought? All right, it's very, very simple, guys. How do you change a negative thought? Negative thought. All right into a positive thought. Okay? How do we change it? How do we change this? You know how you do it? You do this through information. All right? Information. And why is information the key? Information is the key because... You need information because that's going to show you that it's going to show you that the thing that you think is impossible or the thing that you think is negative is actually possible and that you can actually do it. For example, if you've never rode a motorcycle in your life and I gift you a motorcycle and tell you you must learn to ride it. You may have anxiety about riding that motorcycle because you automatically think that you're going to crash because you don't know how to ride the motorcycle. And that creates an anxiety and it's going to keep you from riding that motorcycle. It's going to keep you from getting on that motorcycle, right? Like if you, if you, if you don't have a fear of riding the motorcycle because fear doesn't show up until you have, till you're actually airborne flying over the handlebars of the motorcycle <laughs> about to hit the concrete. That's when you have fear. Like you don't have fear of riding a motorcycle. You have anxiety about riding that motorcycle because and you're thinking, you're thinking, right? You're taking that negative thought and it's creating anxiety, right? Right? And that negative thought creates anxiety thinking, hey, I'm going to crash if I get on this motorcycle, right? But if I tell you that I'm going to instruct you on how to ride the motorcycle and assure you that with my help, you won't crash if you do exactly what I say, your anxiety will ease and it will slowly turn into anticipation as you start to learn the concept of riding the motorcycle. Why? Because you're getting the information that lets you know that the thing that seemed impossible is now possible. So starting your podcast may give you anxiety because you don't know how to structure your episodes. But once you have the information to realize that creating and structuring your podcast is easy and actually possible, then that anxiety will slowly turn into anticipation of starting a podcast using the new information that you have and and. It'll create that feeling of anticipation in your heart. That anticipation will make your hands move and you will start creating. All right. And you'll start doing. Okay. Now, and listen, that was the same thing, same way it was for me, you know, when I started, right? When I was in college, I had a I had major anxiety about public speaking. <laughs> right? As most people, most people do, right? When it came to public speaking, I was terrified to speak to a group of people. And I had to do it in church when I was younger, but the anxiety kept my voice shaky and it kept me short of breath. I kept shaking and short of breath and I, my heart would pound and I would get lightheaded and my hands would sweat and all those type, type of things would happen when I was standing in front of the church. And that feeling of extreme anxiety would keep me avoiding having to read the scripture to the t- entire church on second Sundays. That was our that was our youth Sunday or second Sundays. Most churches are like that, I guess. <laughs> but as part of my associate's degree to get out of the junior college I went to so I could go to the division one school that I wanted to play football for, I had to take a public speaking class. And I knew that taking a public speaking class would mean that I would have to actually speak in public. <laughs> I mean, I knew we were going to have to give it. Well, I knew we were going to have to give, you know, presentations while we're in there, but I wanted to go to a power school so bad 
And that was more important than that feeling of anxiety about public speaking. See, you have to get to a point where you want to to, to you have to get to a point to where you, where you want to go is more important than the process to get there. Where you want to go needs to be more important than the process to get there. And once you get, man, once you get that, guys, I'm telling you, the sky's the limit. But listen, I knew that anxiety was holding me back and it would hold me back for the rest of my life if I didn't go out and face it. Because if I didn't face it, I wouldn't have graduated and then I would never had a chance to get to a Power 5 Division One school to play football. So the first day of class came and just as expected, we learned that we're going to be given four different <laughs> four different uh, speeches to the class and all of them would be test grades and that's how we'd be graded in the class. Now go figure, right? Speak, public speaking class, you got to do public speeches to get graded, right? And as the class went on, the professor gave us the tips on how to write our speeches, but one particular day, she broke down a formula that would change my entire college career. Uh, she gave us a simple formula where we would simply just repeat what we said to the audience. Once she gave me that, once she gave me that, that formula, I understood it and I used it to get an A in that class, obviously, right? You had to use it to get an A in that class. But not only that, I got A's on all of the rest of my speeches and presentations I had to give in college, and I still use this formula to today. After I got that formula, I no longer had anxiety about my any presentation that I gave. I always approach presentations with anticipation because I with 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 anticipation because I knew that I had that secret sauce. So this worked for me every single time I used it, even on my podcast when I use it, it works. And it's going to work for you too, right? So his work for Marcel, one of my clients, it worked for my wife on her podcast episodes. And it worked for Steph, uh, Tiffany, another one of my clients. So I want to give you the framework so you can use it too. And I call it the three P framework, all right? And this simple framework, you're going to repeat to your audience three times what you're going to tell them. So if you're ready, here it is. Now, let me get you, let me get a clear sheet here. Let me get a clear sheet here. I got a clear sheet here. All right, great. So let me give you the strategy here, okay? Boom. All right. Okay, number one. And I'm telling you, this is so simple. I'm telling you, this is so simple. Number one, tell them what you are going to tell them. Step one, tell them what you're going to tell them. It is simple as that. This is the three-peat formula. All right, don't laugh my hand right there. Tell them what you're going to tell them. It is simple as that. Tell them what you're going to tell them. What are you going to be telling them about? I'm going to be telling them how to make baskets. All right, so you get up there and say, hey, today I'm going to be telling you about getting baskets, <laughs> making baskets, all right? Number two, tell them. Simply just tell them. Tell them how you're going to make the baskets, <laughs> right? Hey, today I'm going to be telling you about how to make a basket. Number two, hey, here's how to make a basket, all right? And then number three, it's probably the easiest of them all. Tell them what you just told them. Oh, my God. That is, that is it. That is simply it. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you've told them. That's it. It's that simple. It's so simple yet so powerful. And listen, I assure you, if you follow the steps outlined here, you'll always create powerful, impactful messages. I'm talking about every single time. Okay. Uh, and you'll create episodes that are so impactful and so powerful that people will listen to you and you won't have to worry about sounding silly or messing up. So always remember, tell them, tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you've told them. All right. 